Here are three problems that will help you get ready for the 2.1 to 2.3 quiz in Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 Honors. And it takes you through the progression of the types of questions that you're going to see exactly on the quiz, even in the same order. So what you'll be looking at right now is you have a picture, you have a series of dots, I put them in purple so they show up, and there are three questions that all relate to this picture. You want to know what is the domain of the function of the, of the picture that is shown, what is the range of what is shown, and then finally, are you looking at a function? If so, why? If so, why not? So when you do have ones like these, sometimes they can be presented as a table, sometimes it's going to be presented as an input-output. If it's presented this way, which is more of a visual, the best thing to do to start it is write down the names of the points next to each one that's on your picture. So if you look at your first one, this is the point negative 2, 0. So you're just counting that you went left 2 and you didn't go up or down at all. This is the point 0, 1. Over here you have a point that's 2, 2. You have a point that is 3, negative 1. And you have a point that is 2, negative 3. So all I'm doing there is just naming the points, counting the spaces, seeing where the x is and where the y is. That's going to make this question so much easier to answer. Because if you think about domain, domain is referring to your x values. So what you're doing is you are listing all of the different x coordinates. So a lot of times we'll use a capital D for domain. When I look at my list, I have an x that's negative 2. I have an x that's 0. I have two x's that are 2. You don't have to write it twice. Both this point right here and this point right here have x values of 2. You can write 2 twice, but it is not necessary. And then the last point has an x value of 3. So it's just looking at just the x coordinate, which is the first number, and listing the different x's. For your range, your range are your y values. So what I'm doing with this is the same thing, but now I'm looking at the second coordinate, the y coordinates, and making a list. You could go like bottom to top, top to bottom, whatever you want to do. I'm going to actually start kind of looking at the bottom of this graph, looking at this point, and go lowest to highest. So I have negative 3 is the lowest y, and then negative 1, and then 0, 1, and 2. You notice none of these repeat, so that's why there are more numbers in the range, because in the domain, 2 was there twice. So that is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to name the coordinates, figure out where the x and y's are, and then we're going to make a list. Domain is always your list of your x's. Range is your list of your y's. If your problem is presented more in a table format, then you're looking for your input or your x's for domain, and your range would be your output or your y values. As far as it, it's a, is it a function, what you're looking for to be a function is every x or everything in the domain has to have exactly one y value. When it's visual, it's really easy. What you're doing is something that we call the vertical line test, which is seeing if I draw a vertical line anywhere on my picture, is there ever going to be a time where I touch more than one point or spot on the graph? And what you'll see is if I draw a line through these two points, that breaks the vertical line test. It hit two points with one vertical line. So we would say that this is not a function, and your reasoning is something just as simple as saying vertical line test, which we abbreviated VLT. The other option is you could kind of make me a little chart that says, you know, 2 goes with two different values. 2 goes with 2, but it also goes with negative 3. So we have an x value with two different y values. So there's a lot of ways to explain it. The visual way is looking at that vertical line, but you can also make like a little chart with arrows saying, oh, here's my x value, but it has two different partner y values. Or you could write it in words. Any of those would be acceptable, and it's just what you're more comfortable with. So that's the first thing. You'll have two problems on your quiz that are like that, that are set up in one of either a table format or a visual format and asking you the same series of questions. The next section on your quiz is going to ask about doing things with slope. And we're going to talk about finding slope, comparing slopes. In this particular problem, we are using slope to determine if lines are parallel, if lines are perpendicular, or neither. So we have two lines. We need to find the slope of each of them. So if you remember your slope formula, I'll write it up here so you can see it. You subtract your y's on top, your x's on the bottom. It doesn't matter which point you start with as long as you're consistent. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to do 2 minus negative 3. And then I'm going to start here and do 4 minus negative 1. What you'll have happen is they both will become addition. So you'll get 5 over 5. And make sure you take the time to reduce, because it's a lot easier to compare reduced answers than it is to compare things that haven't been reduced. Then you're going to do the same thing with the second line. So this was line 1. We have a slope of 1. Now with line 2, I'm going to do 4 minus negative 2. 
and then 0 minus 6. On the top, again, it becomes addition because you have the minus minus. On the bottom, it is negative. When I reduce this, I get negative 1. Now I'm ready to compare. So when you do these problems in the quiz, you tend to get a point for getting one slope right, a point for getting the other slope right, and then a point for what is your conclusion, what do you tell. What you're looking for, if it's parallel, the slopes have to be exactly the same. So they have to either both be positive, they have to either both be negative, and they have to have the same numeric value. This is definitely not parallel because one is positive and one is negative. If they're going to be perpendicular, then they have to be opposite, which means one is positive and one is negative, and they have to be reciprocals, meaning that if you flip the fraction, you get its reciprocal. So when you look at these, these are definitely opposites. The question is, are they reciprocals? Well, think about what one is as a fraction. One is one over one. If I flip it, I still get one over one. So one is its own reciprocal. These then are opposite, they are reciprocals, so my conclusion would be that they are perpendicular, and there is the symbol for perpendicular, and you can definitely write the symbol instead of the word. If you try both things, it's not the same slope, and it's not opposite reciprocals, maybe they're opposites but not reciprocals, maybe they're reciprocals but they're both positive, then you would say neither, and that is definitely a, a viable option. Most lines are not parallel or perpendicular. The, all the other options out there are just classified under neither. One of the last things you're going to have to do on your quiz is to graph. And we talked about a lot of different techniques for graphing. We talked about making an XY table. We talked about doing a slope-intercept form and the cover-up method. So what I want to show you on these is what I think is the most efficient forms. And if you look at the first one, because it has Y by itself, it is in slope-intercept form, we want to use the Y equals MX plus B. So I'm going to make a little chart over here and write down what the M and what the B are. This is going to be the easiest way to graph lines that are in this form. So my slope is negative 2 over 3. You have to decide where you're going to put the negative. I tend to always put it with the top number. And then my y-intercept is 5. The y-intercept tells you where you start. So you put a point on your y-axis at 5. So if you count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places, that gives you my starting point. And then you use the slope to move. So top number tells me if I move up or down. Because it's negative, we're going to move down. The bottom number tells me right or left. Because it is positive, I'm going to move to the right. So starting at this B value, we're going to go down 2, right 3, put a second point, and then connect the dots. What you should see is a line that has a negative slope, because M was negative, so you see that line is falling. On the second one, you have options. You could rewrite it. You could solve for y, so you get it to look like the one we just did. Another option that can be a little faster when it's in standard form, which is what you're looking at, is to do what was called the cover-up method, which finds intercepts. What you're doing is you are covering up one variable, seeing what's left, and when you solve that, you get the intercept. Because the intercept for x is when y is 0. So if y is 0, it's gone. It's covered up. So my x-intercept comes from solving 2x equals 9, kind of pretending like that negative 3y isn't even there because it equals 0. Divide by 2, I get an x-intercept of 9 halves. And then I do the same thing with the x, so I'm going to erase so you can put that back. But this time, when I want to find the y-intercept, I'm going to put 0 in for x, so that gets rid of your x value, leaving you with negative 3y equals 9 divide by negative 3, you get a y-intercept of negative 3. Now be careful when you graph these. You're not working with slope. You're working with two points. One is on your x-axis, one is on your y-axis. This one right here is on your x-axis. 9 halves is 4 and a half. So you're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then halfway, and put a point on the x-axis. y is negative 3, so you're going to go down 3. So one point will be on the x-axis, one point will be on the y-axis when you use this method and then you connect the dots. The only thing that's tougher about this is we don't know what the slope was. We didn't take the time to find it, so it's harder to tell if your answer actually makes sense. This line obviously has a positive slope, but I didn't rewrite it, so I don't know the slope. But it gives you a faster option than doing the rewriting and then graphing after that.